so here we are with uh, the arms glued in place. Um, next thing we have to paint are the shoulder pads. And I know a lot of you uh, guys have a little problems um, painting the uh, that circular lights like we did on the helmet. And yeah, I think that shoulder pad here is just a very good um, part of the miniature to actually demonstrate that once again. So we had a couple of requests from the people on is it Facebook or yeah, something? Yeah, uh, Facebook. Do. Yeah, uh, Adam and uh, Steve Cornish. Uh, they both asked for uh, for a little explanation on the on that Ron highlight topic, and yeah, luckily we can just show that here on the very same figure. Um. You can see the, the base color is a bit wet, so I'll let that dry and come back for a second layer. Again, try to be uh, quite neat with your, uh, with your base color and just leave that little black line to um, those small um, trimming to the side. Now for our um, round reflex, we want to have it in the in the same position, matching that uh, reflex here. So it needs to be somewhere here. Um, as the shoulder pad is quite oval um, from from that shape, we also want to to get like a oval shaped highlight. Um, I will first mix uh, mid-tone from the uh, Cantor blue and the Teclis blue and draw a larger oval highlight here. And a smaller um, oval highlight just with the pure um, techless blue here in the middle. And make sure you uh, get a nice even coverage of the highlight dot without um, actually building up too much uh, um, too much of a thick layer of paint because otherwise it's kind of hard to get um, those lines out again um, so next step I will just mix some of the um, the first uh, highlight tone that I've applied and mix that with about an equal amount of the techless blue to create a mid-tone between the, the two tones. Turn that down a bit. Now I'm just trying to glaze over the, the border of the two highlights. And I try to push the pigments a little to the center of the highlight. This paint is a bit thinner and it dries quite fast on the surface. Mm. It would be more visible when we do it uh, to the uh, to that larger outer highlight. So I'm mixing some of the base color with um, the first highlight color. And yeah, keep in mind when working with glazes, um, it's safer to work on the uh, thin side and just do three or four layers more than just ruining it with a, with a layer that is too thick. OK, 
Okay, let it dry and continue with the second layer. And really always uh, push the pigments towards the, the highlight. So they collect more at the at the border than on the surface. Okay, also I think it just needs to be a tiny bit brighter. So just add a bit more of the first highlight tone. So we can broaden uh, broaden our circle here. already quite nice and quite soft but to to really make it work on the on the whole surface we will also add some of that um, our base cantor blue here in the in the edge very thin and pull that out clean the brush and feather it here towards the upper edge So this is exactly the same technique as you would when you were painting on a flat surface. Um, but are there any tips you can give? It, it, it's we, we had a few requests for people asking how to do it on the round surface because they were struggling. Are there any particular tips you would give for painting the round surface compared to painting the flat surface? Do uh, you mean round like this here? or? Mm -hmm. um, it's something as well when you were showing me the loaded brush, you were saying how it's slightly different to do it for a round uh, surface than it is to do it on a flat. Yeah, I think the, there's really like like not uh, a strong difference, uh, or like a big difference, um, because I mean, here you just have to make sure that you um, distribute the paints and like really in a circular way. Mm -hmm. You have to do that on other parts as well, but uh, here you can't really pull the pigments anywhere. You just need to work with the surface. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if you combine the stuff that we showed here on the helmet and the shoulder pad, that is actually, I mean, you just need round reflexes like that on round surfaces, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think because uh, the, the shoulder pad is still um, quite a bit darker uh, overall, um, as the as the rest of the armor, uh, I like to bring up the whole shoulder pad a bit with uh, glazes of the of the light blue, uh, because it really should be nearly the the same uh, color on the helmet and the the shoulder pad. So you can see that still needs a bit of light color. Okay, um, yeah, I think you, you got the point. I mean, I will um, still continue with uh, one or two uh, two glazes of the, uh, the light color. 
but I think Michael might just show that on the speed up because it is kind of boring uh, to just happily glaze. You can do that for, for half an hour or so. Um, but yeah, I think we would just uh, need maybe another one or two layers of uh, thin glaze to, to make it work. All right, so um, I will just add uh, some, some scratches like we did before, but uh, I will do that uh, off cam and we'll be back for the uh, gold trims on the shoulder pad. Okay. All right, so uh, scratches are in, uh, in place. Um, I just added also a tiny bit of the highlight color from the scratches into the center of our um, round highlight. For the the gold, we will start with uh, some glorious gold from um, Game Color and add a tiny bit of the uh, armor brown from uh, Vallejo Model Air. And with the pre heresy Space Marines, the new shoulder pet design is kind of tricky to paint because it's a little bit thinner than. Than the ones before, so we're trying just to to hit it more with the side of the brush, than actually trying to paint it with the with the tip. Um, just in case you wonder how I will paint the 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 lower side and the inner part of the. Uh, Shorter pad, it's uh, still detachable, it's just uh, put in place with a bit of blue tech. So you can easily take it off and uh, paint the, these parts off cam. Okay, and with all metallic paint, metallic paints, it's better to just add two layers to, to have that nice overlapping effect of the metallic pigments. One thing you have to, to keep in mind when you um, paint metallics like that here is that also the highlights on the metallic should be quite strong and um, also match the highlights on the on the figure. So I'm just taking some pure glorious gold because I want that highlight to be just here. Again doing a border highlight and with a mixture of chrome and a tiny bit of the glorious gold Putting the, the strong highlight here in the center. And blending it a bit to the side with a bit more of the glorious gold in there. Mm -hmm. Nice and shiny. And another one here on top. So first layer of pure glorious gold. And a bit of the chrome. Okay, quite nice so far. Um, I'd like to still get a tiny, um, tiny highlight here on that edge, just to make it stand out a little bit more. I'll just use some little bit of chrome just on the tip of the brush. A little hard to see on the cam, but it works already quite nice. Might add a bit of tank brown to increase the contrast right there. Just a bit of tank brown and a glaze consistency here to the edge. 
Mm -hmm. And also some, some tank brown here for the shadow area. Keep in mind that we will still have the the um, the backpack here that covers that that area, so we don't need too much of a highlight there. Um, but just a tiny bit, if you can can uh, see that uh, gold shining through here, you still need a little little highlight. So we will just take some of the pure glorious gold because it's now lighter than than the color underneath and. Just add something like a secondary highlight here. Here and there. Okay. Yeah, I think that's quite a nice uh, intense gold. And I think I would just do the, the inner part, um, same as I did here, quite dark um, with, a, uh, with a bit of tank brown over it. Um, so it does not sh uh, pop out too much, um, but yeah, I think you you got to have a paint the metallic, so I can do that off cam, and um, we'll be back with the other um, shoulder pad that I've already prepared to just show you um, how I paint the rivets. Okay. All right, so um, here we are with the prepared backpack. Um, just the rivets missing, and for the rivets we uh, have to prepare a dark metal tone to start with, so we're um, just taking some of that uh, Lead Belcher Dark Silver from Games Workshop and we'll add a bit of black and a bit of that Stegadon Scale Green. Um, in, if you compare the two colors, um, that paint already looks quite quite reflective and metallic. But uh, once we will um, add the strong highlights with the chrome, you will see that this is a lot brighter, actually. Um, when you paint small elements like the rivets here, I think it's uh, just important to be as neat as possible to, for example, have uh, like the outline, the black around the, the rivets, they should be really like the same uh, with all around the, the rivet and nearly the same in all of the, the rivets. Um, just good to spend like an extra minute on that to make that really clean. <laughs> You can already see actually from all the um, lights here uh, on my desk, we have quite a, a nice little uh, light setting here. So we have the top reflex here and a smaller reflex on the lower side. And um, we will also try to paint that on. And we'll first paint the uh, small reflex on the top uh, with pure chrome. quite nice and, and reflective and for the secondary highlight we will just um, mix a bit of the uh, red badger with a tiny bit of the chrome and as we uh, darkened our base tone that should be already enough highlight wise and we'll just try to Draw a small line here on the on the lower side. If you paint uh, non-metal, um, that secondary reflex is really important to to make it look like uh, like real metal. I think one thing I would like to to still do to 
to the rivets to really um, get the uh, the metal parts here and the the blue work together. Uh, I would like to just glaze a bit of um, black, like a shadow, over this, and also a little here to the lower side of the rivet. Just a tiny bit, but uh, that can really help to to make make both look um, like they're painted in the in the same way. Not here on the on the very top reflex. Okay. So um, yeah, that's already it for the for the rivets, and uh, we will continue with um, larger surface metallics on the uh, backpack, and that will also be the uh, last chapter before we switch to the base. All right, thanks.